Hello ladies and gentlemen, and today I'll be talking to you guys about the Battle of Culloden. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because the anniversary is coming up for April 16th, seven, of the date of 1746, that took place on Culloden Moor. The Battle of Culloden was one of the last of the most famous of conflicts in English history known as the Jacobite Uprisings. Or as well, many people even proclaim it as the last battle of the English Civil Wars. Seeing as though it was pretty much one of the most violent conflicts in history, and as well was even supposed to be the final battle for the conflict between the rival kings, such as the rightful heirs to the throne, such as the Stuarts, and the modern day monarchy. And pretty much the Stuarts are the bloodline of the Kingdom of Scotland, in other words, though technically the Kingdom of Scotland was fighting for its king, while King George was fighting and its army of the parliamentarians were fighting for theirs. This was pretty much one of the most unforgotten history in parts of, well, many parts of the Great Britain. But in truth, if you were to actually take a look at modern day history, many times over the Battle of Culloden shapes our modern day history in today. For example, this was actually a little bit of a joint effort between the Scots and including Bonnie Prince Charlie and including none other than the Kingdom of France while they were fighting against the Kingdom of Great Britain. Now though, here's the problem. Many times the Kingdom of Scotland was pretty much divided either joining Scotland or joining the idealism of the Great Britain. However, this is actually understandable because this is actually what brought the downfall of the Scottish clan system. And as well, many times over, the Scottish monarchy actually was dissolved but still, there is the bloodline of the Scottish monarchy still in the day, in which many Scots are hoping that the rightful monarchy would one day take its place back on the throne in Scotland. Now, as well, when we think of the Jacobite uprising, we normally don't understand anything about it until we take start thinking about it. Such as it first started in 1745, especially during this type of conflict, in which Charles Edward Stuart, the rightful heir to the Kingdom of Scotland, Scotland, England, Ireland, and Wales, is which many call Bonnie Prince Charlie, was actually the leader of the Jacobites. In truth, he was actually one of the most famous men in history, seen as though his father was uh, kicked out of his own country along with him. As well, many times over, the Battle of Culloden Moor was actually took place in April 16th, 1746. This battle was also one of the most dangerous, deadly events in history for the Scottish military. As well, this actually was stated to have actually happened, but as well, it's even stated that many times over, Scots actually supported the more claim of the Jacobites than they did of the English, seeing as though that with every town that they ended up marching through, such as Embra, Stirling, and many others down further south, it was actually proclaimed that the that technically the Scots were going to win. However, this did not work out so well, seeing as though it was actually stated there was a traitor amongst the clans, and his witch told a lie in order to actually, well, confuse Bonnie Prince Charlie in order to turn around. This traitor in the process in the process allowed more hundreds of British soldiers to in the process march further north. Since seen as though many of the government troops of the British monarchy had didn't even had any soldiers protecting their homeland. In fact, there wasn't even that many soldiers in the process. And as well, it was even stated that London was on the verge of collapse. As well, King George himself had actually fled the country in order to make sure to not be killed. However though, as I stated, because of this little traitor, we could not actually understand of why this actually happened. Many say money, many say other things. But it is stated that upon this happening that it took place, the Scottish army marched north in order to regroup. However, when the, when the government troops and the process followed them, it was actually stated that there were around 8,000 British troops and as well 10 guns and 6 mortars, while the Jacobites only around had 7,000 and including 12 guns. In other words, around cannons. But as well, the Scottish army didn't actually have that many type of firearms. Most of the time what they did have were only a smorgasbord of firearms such as, say, 
that they would have taken from British soldiers, or as well, they would have had hunting rifles and such. This, however, was still not to work so well. And as well, it's even stated that while fighting against the Scots, the British military actually designed a new form of killing design in order to defeat the Ch Scottish charge, or as many call it, the Highland charge. This was known as, technically as we might see still today in the type of form of history, instead of stabbing from the front, they would actually stab to the side, in other words, to their right, and into the exposed flank of the Jacobite shield. In other words, we can actually see this sometime around during the time and era when we see the Roman Empire, for example. When it came to the Imperial Age in Rome, they did this as well. Instead of stabbing forward, they stabbed to their right in order to kill the person from their exposed area. So, you can see why this was actually an effective way in killing them. Though as well, the Scottish weaponry was of mainly of type of pole arms, Scottish broadswords, dirks, and including the famous Scottish targe, which had a spike in the middle in order to actually be used as a three-way weapon. As what I mean by that is, a Scotsman can actually hold a dirk and a shield in one arm, and as well his broadsword in the other. While including the British soldiers, they hardly had anything but their rifles. But as well, any type of Scottish soldier did have when they had weaponry, it wasn't that many. And as well, they didn't have that much training. Though it is stated that while fighting against the British, the Scots actually had more morale on their side. Though it was stated the Battle of Culloden could never have happened if the Scots had actually attacked them in a night assault. And in the process, they could have actually won. Problem is, though, it was so hard and difficult to understand of where they were going that many Scots were even demoralized and including exhausted from the previous night and could not actually attack. So, by the time it came to April 16th, it was actually estimated that around 240 to 400 casualties of the British military were killed and as well 1,000 were wounded, while the Jacobites suffered around 2,000 killed and wounded as well another 154 captured. As well with France, it was around 222 captured. And later on, many of them were executed for no apparent reason, just because they were Jacobites. And including though, this is actually why the Battle of Culloden was known as the Massacre at Culloden. Seeing as though the commander in charge, Duke of Cumberland, was actually even named, given the title, the Butcher. Which, if you guys can understand why, he would have actually gone as far as killing up to a, of a hundred mile radius of the field just to actually uncover Jacobites, even men, women, and children that weren't even part of the conflict were even killed. As well, many years later, it was even stated that Cumberland was actually taken a rank off of his, well, military. In doing so, it actually caused him to actually lose a rank because of his, this massacre. But as well, it was even stated that the Jacobite uprising could have never happened if the British government had actually acted like, well, human beings towards their fellow Scots. But the problem is, though, they divided the Scottish government system so much that it nearly, in the process, destroyed the Scottish monarchy. As well, it's even stated that many Scotsmen actually chose to fight for the government soldiers mainly because of the fact of clan rivalries. Yes, that's correct. Clan rivalries were the main cause of many reasons why Scotland was disunified at this point in time. As well, they actually chose the government par government army, in which were mainly of redcoat divisions from Britain. However, it's even stated that while fighting in this type of division, many of them were actually also slaughtered, and in the process, it was even stated that they were even arrested sometime later. As well, many of the Scots that men actually managed to survive the conflict in the Jacobite Uprising, it was actually stated they either fled to France or the Americas in order to find a better life, and as well, even took part in the ensuing conflict of the American Revolution. Or as well, even fought with France during the times of the so-called Seven Years' War, or French and Indian War. But as well, Culloden Moor is known as the Massacre of Culloden. And as well, many clans are still labeled throughout the field. Such as many of, like, McFarlane and including many others. I know that 
pretty much my mother's clan, McFarland, actually fought on the side of the Jacobites, while my father's clan, the Gun clan of Gunn, actually fought on the side of the government. Though it's hard to understand which side they actually really did fight on, since there are also the mixed clans, and many of them actually did fight for different divisions, pretty much without their own commanders, who just flocked towards Bronny Prince Charlie, mainly because of the fact they didn't want to live under an English king. So it's still understandable of how this could have happened, and if the Scots could have won many days before the battle had ever taken place. But pretty much to this day, it's still one of the most graphic parts in American history, as well as it is in British history. But as well, it's even seen in a type of series, even called the series known as Outlander, which is probably the most historically accurate area of film that is pretty much historical to the time of what happened and why it caused this. Even though there is slight bit of teleportation of time travel and such, but you get the point of what I'm trying to say. But as well, there is, um, guys, I'll even leave a link down below for you guys for a type of areas of songs that were even written by, that came a long time after the Battle of Culloden, such as the most famous of the known Skyboat song which is supposed to be of Bonnie Prince's Charlie trying to leave the country in order to actually survive. Now, it's even stated that also in some films or series, such as the movie a series of Highlander, for example, actually do depict Bonnie Prince Charlie and including the Jacobite uprisings, as well what Bonnie Prince Charlie would have done in order to make sure to actually retake the lands. But it's even stated that even he himself would never fully declare another conflict in order to make sure that the line of Scotland would never actually die ever again. But you can see why it was one of the most conflict areas in history, and as well, the Moors were actually one of the most gruesome conflicts. But as well, it was also stated that many of the dying were actually stabbed, or as well, shot on sight. As well, it's still a gruesome conflict even to today's history. And many Scotsmen, such as myself, he, even though I live here in Texas, and I was born here in Texas, I still feel more to the Scottish bloodline due to its history. As well, it was even stated that many Scots were pretty much brutalized on the battlefield. And as well, due to its conflict of area, it was even stated that many Scots were, well, just left Scotland even after this event. But as well, guys, I state, I will leave links down below for the history of the Battle of Culloden, such as from tw uh, Battlefield Britain, who actually do a little bit more better than review of it, so that way you guys can understand a little bit more of it. And as well, I will even leave songs below for you guys, so that way you guys can understand the story and the sadness of this conflict. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Hope you found this helpful. If you guys want to actually know, know a lot more about history, also subscribe to the channel and as well also hit that bell button for more notifications and as well click that thumbs up if you guys like this as well guys uh help the channel grow by subscribing and hopefully i can catch you in the next video have a good day